Welcome to Image Autopsy. I'm Garrett Polkas, host of this web series. The Last Breath team and I have over 12 years of trail camera data that has led to the harvesting of some amazing whitetail bucks. In this series, we're gonna break down and dissect trail camera photos and videos and explain how we use that data to target and harvest these big deer. Each episode, we're going to showcase a particular buck that we have hunted and harvested. The goal of this series is to show you and better understand how we've used trail cameras to become more efficient hunters and more effective whitetail hunters. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel as we will be dropping a brand new episode each week. From summer scouting to the very last day of season, we break it all down. Thanks again for tuning in to Moultrie's Image Autopsy. Welcome to Moultrie's Image Autopsy season two. Today we're going to talk about one of the strategies we use to hunt deer and that is by pinpointing a deer's home range due to lack of photos or camera content on other parts of the farm. We're going to be covering a deer that's arguably one of the most impressive we've ever hunted and definitely the widest we've been able to kill with a bow and arrow. And what we're doing is we're going to talk about using a strategy to find his home range because we don't have content elsewhere. This is the image autopsy for Captain Crunch. The farm we were hunting is 320 acres, comprised 70% of ag down, 20% of timber, and 10% of grassy waterways or ditches. So the farm we were hunting is fairly large, but again, mostly ag. Typically we'd run anywhere from eight to 10 cameras to be able to cover our needs. And as we ran cameras on this farm, we found that Crunch really only was on several of these cameras, and more importantly, not on a majority of the other cameras we had on the farm. Given his proximity to daylight when we were getting his pictures, we knew that the few cameras we did get pictures of him on was narrowing down his home range and eliminating a majority of the farm we had permission to hunt. So on this farm, we had a couple major travel corridors, and we hunted those hard. However, we noted that Crunch really, again, was specifically on one major corridor and exclusively not on a large, vast majority of the farm. Though we weren't able to get with him in early season, we made note of this as we began to move and manipulate our cameras around to get closer and closer to where more of these cameras were picking him up on a regular basis. As the season progressed, we were able to connect the dots, understand where we needed to be specifically on the farm through the process of elimination, not by photo pictures, to get into range to kill this deer. So what is the takeaway message from this image autopsy? Most importantly, it's that we have a very large farm that we have the ability to hunt. However, when targeting a specific deer, we had to understand that either A, he had a very tight home range, or B, we were just on the edge of his core area. We were able to move the cameras to manipulate our patterning so that we could understand that we had to be in specific spots to hunt this deer. Ultimately, close the deal, get in tight, and get it done. I smoke him. Oh, yeah, he's going down right there. Oh, <laughs> he's going down right there. Are you kidding? Dude, I, I smashed him, right? <laughs> dude. Oh, that's crunch. I love you, dude. I love you, dude. I love you, dude. I looked up. All I seen was like. I saw something move over there. I thought I heard a buck grunt. And I was like, I, I looked at him. I saw these freaking wide. I'm going to call Logan. I got to call Logan. I smoked him. Right? Dude. I was going to stop him. I'm like. Come on. Oh. 
I just f***ing smashed Crunch. Came right into the decoy. I didn't even call. Oh, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he died. Like, yeah. Well, I guess let's go, uh, let's go see what we can find here. I wonder if we can find my arrow without using lights. There it is, right here. Right here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. But, I mean, I got... Yeah, like a foot. Think we should keep going? Think I got enough? I think you got enough. Well, let's, let's, let's uh, pick up the blood. Okay. Pick up the blood and track him to the edge and see if we can see him. So the funniest thing about this whole ordeal for me was when Garrett shoots this deer, it goes and runs out of the field. The funny thing about the clover field that we're sitting over is there are ravines on every side of it. And this deer, at the very end of the clip before he goes out of frame, runs as hard as he can and he just like springboards off the edge of the field into a ditch. And this ditch has about 20 tree stems per square foot in it. Blood way high up here. This is where, so this guy's is where he Look, jumped. he broke it off. Too. He jumped in. Well, here it is, guys. There's a, just a crap load of blood right in here. There he is, right there. He's dead. Yes. Yeah, baby. Oh, I was worried. Oh man. Look at him. I knew he, oh. I knew he crashed. Look at that freaking toad. Yeah. Oh, oh I was yeah. so nervous, man. Holy smokes. Look at him. Oh. Dude. Oh. Oh. He is a hammer togan, man. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he's, look at that. Oh yeah, he's, he's two feet inside. He's two feet oh. inside. Yes. Shit. Well, looks like I'm gonna have to go see Wayne here in a little bit. All right, before we drag him or get him live, I think what, I'm just gonna start trying to hump his ass out of here. Okay. <sighs> and so here Garrett is dragging out a 23 inch wide deer that looks like a combine through a field of sticks that are about you know, an inch in diameter. So he's having a hell of a time getting it out of there and he's got to drag it about 40 yards up to the field edge. Come on. The story is crunch is gone. So if you guys aren't a part of the inner circle, which you should be, you've already seen this. We showed it to them first. It's a deer we call crunch. Shot him tonight at 512, 513. Um, and gosh, man, I'm still riding the high. Like I was shaking like a dog shitting razor blades after I shot this buck. Um, probably the whitest deer I've ever killed. To give you guys reference, there is probably another three inches at least. And uh, this deer is amazing. 